feels quite like a like, like a battle where you're fighting. Um, more often, though, in recent years, it's been uh, it felt like people are just throwing a lot of stuff at us, and it's, it's, it's difficult to sometimes even keep up. And that you're quite a bit on the defense, uh, trying to protect things in the city that uh, that that we've actually fought quite hard for for many years. But most of the job is actually spent uh, rather than a city a, a city council meeting sitting with community members and, and building with them the type of neighborhood that we talk a lot about in, the, in, 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 in council meetings, but actually talking through their everyday problems, discussing issues that they have that might be important to them, uh, addressing problems that they face on a daily basis, and all, all in an effort to, to, in fact, make their lives better. And it's, a, it's these managing relationships and, and helping individuals that aren't, don't, don't understand or, or haven't haven't had the exposure to uh, the political systems or to uh, to the, the city's uh, rather large and robust um, uh, bureau bureaucracy that we, we help them navigate through some some, some rather difficult water. Th th these folks are actually folks from uh, Matthews House, which is a, uh, a refugee shelter on Dundas Street. The, the house is in fact a TCHC scattered house, which you hear a lot about in the in the in the news these days. It was uh, it's rented to Matthew's House, which is a religious-based charity, but, but not, not necessarily connected with one church. It was just founded with, with those values. Uh, they've been there for about a decade. Uh, they've invested a lot of money in the house, and they help hundreds of new refugees in Canada uh, have a place to stay for just the first month or two uh, when they come to this country so that they're not in a shelter uh, system, uh, and they have a place where they can go get, their, uh, get on their feet uh, then they're they're given actually assistance to find a home, uh, and they're given assistance in the way of furniture for that home, uh, so that they don't uh, they actually are, are taken out of the city system and they have this uh, this strong support base. So they see hundreds of, uh, of refugees and their family go through Matthews House every year. We're working with Matthews Matthews House to have them actually they, they were one of the original houses that were on the list of houses to be sold. Uh, fortunately, we immediately got them taken off that list. Uh, and now we're in discussions about how we can get the the, the not for profit um, be given that they be given an offer on, or, to, or to give an offer on the house that's uh, that's either at market or below based on the, the, the tens of thousands of dollars in upgrades they've done to the property or the hundreds of thousands if not I think it's a quarter of a million that they've paid in rent since they started operating <coughs> all the while saving the city hundreds of thousands in settlement costs. So the question often comes up is, is City Hall broken? And I, I, I often meet that with this, this is not a machine. And it, it's difficult, it, it's difficult to describe in the way that it can be broken. It's, it's, it's got a lot of moving parts, it's got a lot of relationships, things that, that binary ones and zeros doesn't take into account. The mechanics of a computer or of a machine can't really take into account. Um, it, it's often described more like a family. And I think that this is that, that's, that's a better metaphor for how 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 a government uh, uh, operates. And it, George Lankoff often uses this metaphor in into explaining how this how governments arrive at decisions based on if they're progressive or if they're if they're conservative. But I think it's equally as true for how it in fact works because of the relationships that are in play. In that case, then I, I would say that the city isn't broken. It, it couldn't be. It doesn't work with that, that way. People are still getting permits to do building. People are still, there, there are still being speed bumps installed. And business is still actually being conducted. However, and, and as was said earlier, and I think this will be a common theme throughout, um, it's, it's clearly not working well. We're making wrong decisions based on wrong information for the wrong reasons. And so it's more like, well, what some would term it, a, a dysfunctional family. Yes. Um, Personalities certainly do dominate uh, much more than, than, than facts in any debate. Uh, cooperation and consensus building is in fact actively discouraged amongst, uh, amongst my colleagues. And public access and transparency are challenged. And we saw this with removal of, the, of, of many of the citizen advisory panels. Um, we, we see this with the use of, of, of lists for, for appointments. Um, a list from folks wards to be appointed on certain uh, important boards. And we see that with the, with, with the cutting of, of councillors' office budgets and, and the talk of, of, of limiting the number of, of, of councillors. And I see that being, 
being an issue because it, 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 it's, it's very difficult to have all of those conversations you have with all of those different uh, constituency groups when you're you don't have the resources to do that. Uh, after we posted now, and this, this might be relative six or seven planning meetings related to uh, re related to development along a certain avenue in, uh, in, in in my ward, and that has resulted in me using up my entirety of free space at the local community center. Um, and now this was only for a handful of developments, but it works. It's work that needs to be done in order for people to feel like participants in the democratic process, in the process that I've been elected to do. And unfortunately, because of the resource, uh, the, the resource removal or cuts, we now we, we don't have the resources to, to, to host meetings if another media issue comes around. And when you have uh, when, when you have the the the, the the emergencies that take place, these issues around 50 fits with the recent assaults. We also had to host meetings for that. And so you see that the resources that should be getting put into the city uh, in interpreting and often uh, uh, often helping the community deal with, with with issues that they're being faced in their community aren't, aren't there anymore. So that's going to bring me to my three my three acts of, of, of TO politics. They're all clean, don't worry. Uh, so the first one is, is fiction. Second one is factions, and the last one is fear. Sorry, I printed all those. So the first one being being, being fiction. We seem to enter uh, a phase of decision making at, at city council that isn't actually fact based. Um, it, it's more based on, on on catchphrases than it is actually evidence. Uh, the use of, of the, the, the gravy train metaphor and uh, it, it, it given this endless mandate to put everything on the chopping block. Thing. That's gravy. That's gravy. That's gravy. And it's it, it, if you're not a road or or a sewer, it's none of our business. And that's that's a difficult thing to take because the city is that front line of of, of government that people see on a daily basis. And we actually have a massive role in making people's lives uh, easier and, and 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 also at the same time people becoming involved in uh, in, in politics in one way or another in their community in one way or another because it's those very basic things that, uh, that, and functions that we hold. You see, you see this, this fiction and, 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 and lack of uh, evidence in decision making on things like Jarvis, where we're removing a lane of, 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 of a bike lane that is very well used. It's, uh, it, it's, it, it's not slowing down the, the accompanying cars to, a, to, to a, an extreme amount. And it's, uh, it's gonna cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to take out. You see this in things like transit, when we hear subway, subway, subways. Well, we, we can't build a subway based on promises uh, of, of development to come if you're not actually permitting that development that's going to come, or if you're not going to deliver the density that is actually needed to facilitate and, and sustain the transit line that you put in. Plastic bags. We had a percent fee that was saving the, the city huge amounts of money by diverting waste from, from our landfill. And yet, because of uh, be, because it was a role of government, that big government, all of these company, all of these companies were now breaking it in about these plastic bags. When most of them were actually had transferred the Toronto model nationwide, and were and, and were actually donating a lot of that money back. And you can look at the bags; it goes it kind of cost two and a half cents anyhow. So it's not like they were reaping some huge windfall. They're now recouping their cost. Um, that was that that was. Uh, disregarded now, disregarded a stronger piece of, of, of policy, but that's for, for another conversation. Um, this idea that we can cut taxes and provide better services as a result is just it's not true. It's, it's, it, it can't be it can't be done mathematically. So the politics of factions. Uh, I I took uh, I took a little bit of creative license here. The politics of division. This is the same sort of thing. Um, it's two things. One is building division back city hall, and if that wasn't bad enough, things like name calling or or, or, or vindictive votes against a street sign in someone's door because they didn't vote your way, or uh, or, or electoral electoral threats that we're going to get you in the next election, um, constantly drawn out court cases over the most ridiculous things and under the most ridiculous circumstances. If that wasn't bad enough, there actually is, there are folks actually trying to and systemically trying to build decision, uh, build divisions across different groups in our city. 
They're, they're trying to pit neighbor versus neighbor, whether it's the war on the car metaphor that's used quite quite constantly, when we know that roads are, aren't only for cars, but they're also for bikes, they're also for public transit, they're also for pedestrians. Whether or not it's the downtown versus the suburbs, trying to pit the, the one against the other when like, you, you might end up living there a couple years later that really change your value system and, and, and how you think the city should be run. Uh, homeowners versus renters, trying to tr uh, draw, draw cleavages within, within a, a, a neighborhood. And by terming people usual suspects and totally disregarding them and disrespecting them right to their face at, at community meetings. And in the media saying, oh no, it's not you down here. These people are of a different breed, a different sort that have meddled in politics quite, quite, uh, quite considerably. I thought it was quite beyond the crowd. I don't know, I'm trying to make a little joke with this one. Um, but or the politics of fear. We, a couple of years ago, we're constantly hearing these, these, these massive numbers. You're going to get a 40% tax increase. We're $800 million uh, in a deficit. And uh, then all of a sudden, when you actually, when the wash is over, and you realize, oh, no, this is, this is balancing the budget out here, we actually don't end up with such a massive uh, cut. But that's what's, that's what's being put on the table. Cuts to libraries, cuts to swimming pools, these massive increases when we're not in such a bad place. And so we end up, uh, that, that, that you put everything else on, out on the table and, and we end up losing out as a result because of the, the fear tactics. So could we save a little bit, but all of a sudden we said goodbye to some of the very things that, uh, that we needed. When in fact, uh, when you do the math, the, the, the VRT was, was, was the vehicle registration tax was, was a, a requisite and appropriate revenue balancing tool was actually uh, the, the cause of most of all of the stressors that were uh, that were put on the city these past couple budget cycles. So the reason to be optimistic. I wanted to end on an optimistic point. I'm going to draw a little quicker than I thought because I lost my time. Um, I think there are a couple things that, that are reasons for us to be optimistic. One is that this gives us a great opportunity, and we always have this option, to, to work together in our communities to try to make our communities better, safer, uh, and higher quality of life for everybody. The second is getting communities engaged. Uh, nothing brings out a community like a, like a strong adversary and strong conflict, and I think that that has resulted in the last two years. And third, this idea that, that, that we can, in fact, between councillors of different political stripes, break down these barriers and work together towards a towards common goal, if not on a constant basis, on an issue-by-issue -issue basis. And I have some examples of that. The first one, this was uh, in, in the community, that there are actually endless, endless possibilities to work with the community to try to make it better for the neighbors. You've just got to find willing people that have a shared set of values. And so, um, and th this is often actually where the biggest, biggest uh, difference can be made. This, this was a picture from uh, about three weeks ago. We were able to give out uh, 50 uh, slightly used but, but refurbished bicycles to, to kids and adults. In, in the neighborhood. And this was made possible by uh, a group of Olympic athletes and, uh, and a year's bike shop who got in touch with me over Twitter and said, hey, we got a couple bikes to give away. If you want to do something? And so we devised a, um, a, a plan and, and helped them execute, which we got you to do a, uh, a photo contest. Or a, they, they drew a picture, sent us a story, we got poems, we got things from three-year-olds and things from 83-year-olds. And, they came, and then the Olympians came to the community and had to talk to folks about building a healthy neighborhood uh, and how to get people out of their cars and, and on to more active transportation sources. Um, so this was, a, this was a fortunate thing we can do. Uh, we also targeted at, at those that, that, that needed the bikes the most. So that's a TCH building in the background. Uh, we spent a lot of time working with their board and, and getting the word out to the kids in the TCH building so that they had, uh, so that they had uh, opportunities to get involved. Next is um, this, this idea that it, it brings our community closer together and gets us uh, more active citizenry. I, there were two four-hour meetings, at, or four-hour, 24-hour meetings at, uh, the, at the, the core service review cycle and the budget cycle. This was an amazing uh, demonstration of, uh, of democracy in action. This, these were individuals coming out to tell our city how they should spend their money. 
And some of them were, were more creative. I don't know the pictures and, uh, and, uh, of the puppets and, and stuff like that. And some were little kids. And, but but what, what was most striking was the volume of them. There were literally thousands. And these are people, some of which would have been engaged before previously, but more often than not, these were, these were new folks. Now, the, 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 the big thing that makes me optimistic about this is that people coming together and the community coming together around this is the first step towards major political and social change because it's showing that more people are interested, more people are getting active, and, uh, and, and more people are realizing that they, they can make a difference in the community. <laughs> and, and finally, just a, a, a couple things that are on breaking down some of these barriers. We've had, or I've had, rather good success in, in reaching across the table and working with what would be normally a, a very straight bedfellows for me to be working one-on-one -on -one with uh, to, to affect change on very specific issues. So with Councilor Min and Wong, uh, we were able to work together to, uh, to, to stop a massive fee that would come into place to charge charities and not-for-profits um, who were delivering uh, shelter programs or, or, or food banks uh, to, to, to hit them with a new fee. Uh, the second one was with uh, Councillor uh, John Parker, uh, who, who's working with us to, to stop a casino at Ontario Place, which, like me, not on Ontario Place, but uh, we're still having a fight to make sure that it's not anywhere close to there. Uh, Councillor Shiner, uh, with his work on the plastic bag fee. Councillor Nunziata, we had a joint motion on uh, clean trains. We've got, I believe, unanimous support. This is to uh, increase the number of stops on the uh, on the ARL link to the airport, which could functionally work as uh, the western portion of the downtown relief line. And I worked quite closely with, the, with Mayor Ford on insurance sponsorship money for the Assembly of First Nations, who just recently hosted their annual general meeting in, in Toronto this past year. So it is possible on an issue by issue basis to sit down with other councillors and to work through a solution to any individual problem. It's just unfortunately not, not a common practice. And finally, to, 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 end, to continue on the, uh, on the optimistic step, uh, or optimistic side, it, it's, it's seeing so many more people involved in, in, in politics in Toronto has made these last two years incredibly uh, worthwhile and rewarding to, to me personally. I, I like to steer away from calling myself a politician. I don't know what I'm going to do two years from now. I don't know what I'm going to do ten years from now. Um, in, in both those avenues, or the one thing I do know is that I'm going to remain activist uh, in, in one form or another. Uh, much of that comes from, from, from some of my grandfather used to share with me and that was never never miss your opportunity to serve. And so it's it's seeing all the other people that are stepping up and coming forward and getting more involved uh, that has made what what was a, or could have been turned a couple of difficult years uh, actually quite rewarding and seeing these people get involved is making me uh, very hopeful for, for what the future holds in the city both uh, young people uh, that, that, that are now coming up and becoming activists in their own right and people that haven't been engaged in a lot of years and have never done anything for their own life getting more involved. So I think that's where my end. We'll hear from the academic side.